This is the RC Elite 2 and the Adios Pro 2. Some of the best marathon shoes on the market today. But which of these is better? It's time to lace up these super shoes and take them for a run. Ten point one two miles, seven minutes, thirty four seconds per mile, one hundred fifty eight beats per minute today. Going for a workout in the Adidas Adios Pro Two. Today's workout was five times eight minutes at threshold with one minute recoveries. Those one minute recoveries go by so fast. At this point, they're just so short for me that I'm just walking during the recoveries. Normally, I jog when I do like mile repeats or six minutes on, one minute off. But when I've been bumping it up to that eight minutes. I just been walking because those eight minute stretches at threshold are just so tough to maintain over the course of the workout. Now, I did the same workout in the New Balance RC Elite 2 last week, the same five times eight minutes on and one minutes off. So I can compare these two shoes head to head. Now, before I give my thoughts on these two shoes, I do want to go over some disclosures. The RC Elite 2 is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports for the purpose of review. And the Adidas Adios Pro 2 was a pair of shoes that I purchased myself. However, no matter how the shoe got to me, no one's paying me to make this video or to use either of these shoes or to include them in a battle video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with those disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Adidas Adios Pro 2 and the New Balance RC Elite 2. First, let's talk about some specs. Let's go over the Adios Pro 2 first. We've got a 39 millimeter stack height in the heel with an 8.5 millimeter drop, giving us 30.5 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot in this shoe. And in the midsole, what we have in the Adidas Adios Pro 2 is a Light Strike Pro foam, which is their most advanced super foam that Adidas has right now. And to give it a little bit of extra propulsion and also a little bit of extra stability, you've got carbon energy rods, not a carbon fiber plate, but five rods that run the length and kind of parallel the kind of direction and slope of a carbon fiber plate. But those rods line up with the metatarsals underneath your foot. Moving to the outsole, we have continental rubber in a very thin layer that's just placed on the outsole here. There's also a little kind of like window of extra, extra grippy continental rubber, something that's a little bit more familiar to what you might have seen in other Adidas racing shoes in the past. Moving to the upper, we have Cellar Mesh 2.0, which is pretty much a see-through material, but it's also very strong, supported with some underlays underneath. The tongue is just a very thin piece of foam, almost no padding at all. Moving back to the heel cup, there's very little structure back here. There's just a little bit and kind of along the seam along the back of the heel, and then it moves to two notches that flank each side of the Achilles that have a little bit of padding just enough to kind of serve as some bumper pads to keep the heel locked down in place. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a weight of 8.0 ounces and 226 grams. Moving to the RC Elite 2, we've got a little bit of a shorter shoe here. We've got a 36 millimeter stack height shoe with an eight millimeter drop, leaving us with 28 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. The midsole material that we have here is New Balance's fuel cell foam. And whenever New Balance uses fuel cell, like each shoe that they use seems to have kind of like a different kind of iteration, a little bit of a tinkering in terms of just how soft and squishy it is and just how much we have of it in here. And I think that what they have in the RC Elite 2 is probably the best kind of example of fuel cell that I've seen New Balance put together. And to aid with some of the springiness of this foam that's in here, there's also a full length carbon fiber plate. On the outsole, we've switched up the outsole pattern from 
from that wonderful, super crazy pattern that we had in the RC Elite version one. This year they went to something that I believe the main reason for the change, it's easier to implement and also a bit more sustainable, but also there's just tons of rubber and grip. A lot more rubber than I typically like to see on an outsole uh, for a racing shoe, but man, they're really making it work here. We have a mesh upper that is very strong, lightweight and breathable fits very, very well. No padding on the tongue, similar to the Adios Pro 2, but there is a little bit more padding around the heel cup in the RC Elite 2 than we've seen in the Adios Pro 2. Not too much, it's still definitely a race shoe, but there's just a little bit more padding than I'd say I'd see in most of the Marathon Super Shoes that are out there. As far as the heel cup goes, there's uh, again, a lot of floppiness here, but along the seam, there is just a little bit more sturdiness to help kind of keep the heel locked in. And I think on both shoes, they're using a little bit of the foam and sculpting it higher up, not only to give a bigger visual effect of how much foam is in the shoe, but also to give kind of like those cups for your heels to kind of sit inside so that they're not moving around too much from a side to side motion. Altogether, this shoe comes in just a little bit lighter than the Adios Pro 2. The RC Elite 2 comes in at 7.8 ounces and 221 grams. So with those specs out of the way, let's talk about what it was like to run in these super shoes. And I gotta say, it's so much fun to run in each of these shoes. I like both of them very, very much. They're great marathon shoes. They're great workout shoes. The footage that you saw is from threshold workouts that I did. So that pace is gonna be kind of in between half marathon pace and 10K pace, but I've also taken each of these shoes out for very long runs. Uh, last week, I also did a 18 and a half mile run in the Adios Pro 2. And leading up to the Chicago Marathon, I did a 20 mile run in the RC Elite 2. And in both scenarios, the shoes just do a fantastic job but there are some differences. I'll say with the Adios Pro 2, it definitely feels more like super of a super shoe uh, in terms of the feel that you're getting underfoot and that foot strike is mainly focusing right in kind of like this area of the shoe. You're not really using a lot of this part back here. When you're landing on here, it definitely feels very, very bouncy and very springy and not springy in like a, there's a lot of travel. It just feels like you're hitting it and just bouncing right up, almost like, you know, whacking a, a racquetball against uh, the wall really, really hard. There's just so much spring back that I feel like I'm getting from this foam. And combining that with the energy rods in here, you're getting a really strong propulsive effect with each push off that you have in your foot strike. It's a very noticeable feeling when you're running in the shoe that there is definitely something special going on underfoot. The RC Elite 2 in comparison is a lot more subtle. I think when I look at my footage in slow motion of me running, I think no shoe deflects in terms of the foam, in terms of deforming when I'm landing on it more than the fuel cell does in this RC Elite 2. The RC Elite 1 was that way as well, but I think there's a little bit more stack height this year. Uh, so that you have a little bit more play in terms of how much that foam deflects. So it looks pretty wild when you see the slow motion footage running in the shoe. Underfoot, it doesn't feel squishy, doesn't feel like it's squirrely at all. Instead, it just feels like a foam that's really absorbing all the impact really well, but with that rebound of the foam plus that carbon fiber plate, it scoops you right out of the compression and pushes you along really nicely as you're going into each stride. So kind of the sensation underfoot is very different. One is just very squishy, soft, and very forgiving. The other one is very precise, but also like bouncy and almost takes a little bit more effort to, to, to wrangle, so to speak. And so one of the things that I've noticed is that when I focus on running pretty, so like deep into a repetition, I'm starting to get tired, starting to get sloppy. I start focusing in on, you know, are my mechanics good? Am I standing up tall? Am I leaning forward a little bit? Am I like kicking my butt as I pick up my legs behind me? Uh, do I have knee drive? All those things. I'm thinking about my form, thinking about how my arms are moving. The more I can kind of like do things well, the more the shoe seems to reward me. So like, I definitely can always sense that the shoe is there and working with me as I'm going through the reps. The RC Elite 2, on the other hand, is just a very forgiving shoe. And it seems like no matter how sloppy I get, I'm still gonna get a lot of that squish. I'm still getting a lot of that rebound. I'm still gonna get a lot of that quick motion. And it just feels like a little bit lighter of a shoe overall. It feels like a little bit more comfortable of a shoe overall 
as well. So like two very different approaches to speed during your workouts and during your long runs at marathon pace. Now, when it comes to the uppers in both of these shoes, I will say that the Adidas Adios Pro 2 fits very much like a racing shoe. When you put it on, not only when you're stepping in it, but also when you're just wearing it, everything feels like race day. It feels like a race shoe, it looks like a race shoe, uh, and the fit is like a race shoe as well. And I think it, it has to be because this is just a very tall shoe. And when you're going around corners, uh, the shoe can be a little bit, let's say exhilarating when it comes to taking sharp turns. And so I think that if it wasn't very snug fit, if everything didn't get locked down very securely, your ankles would just kind of be all over the place. So it definitely has that very snug fit. It's super breathable in terms of the upper. And I really like the way that this upper is executed. It just fits onto the foot. It secures all this midsole and all this technology to the bottom of your feet and you just let it rip. On the other hand, just like the foam on the RC Elite 2 just feels a little bit more forgiving as far as super foams go, I feel like the fit on the upper is a lot more forgiving on the RC Elite 2. I feel like it's snug, I don't feel like the shoe is ever like too loose in any way, even at speed and even in cornering. But I also feel like there's just a little bit more room. I don't feel like I'm crunched in there quite so much. It's not quite as much of an uncomfortable racer fit while also still maintaining the racer fit. There's also a little bit more padding back here, which I don't really notice when I'm running. I don't feel like, ooh, I'm more comfortable because there's more padding. But overall, it does make me feel like, you know, this is a shoe that I can not only race in, but I think that can handle some longer distance running, some of my longest runs, and also other types of running other than just my fastest workouts or my races. So it feels like it's a little bit more versatile in terms of the way that they're designing this upper. Moving to the outsole, let's stick with the RC Elite 2. I think this outsole is just super grippy. I've never had a single problem, no matter how wet or slippery the surfaces are that I'm running underfoot. And I do think that it's going to protect this foam quite a bit so that I'll be able to get a lot of miles out of it. There is a ton of rubber on here for a marathon super shoe. It's kind of surprising how much they put on here, but it's still coming in at a really lightweight and it's not detracting from that feeling that I'm get from this fuel cell foam. So I'm really enjoying the way that they've implemented their outsole here. The outsole on the Adios Pro 2 is, I think, trying to save weight as much as possible, but I don't think that by any means are they skimping on traction. I do find that for both of these shoes, uh, when I'm on slightly sandy surfaces and I'm running along the lakefront, there's lots of sand. And on after windy days, a lot of that sand gets blown all over the place. I do feel like on sandy surfaces, the Adios Pro 2 does a little bit less good of a job at providing traction, but you know, marathon shoes and sandy pavement just aren't a good mix overall. So it's not a huge knock for me in terms of how it's performing. The rubber is a very thin layer, but if it's anything like the Continental rubber that was on the Adios Pro 1, I don't think it's really going to be that big of a concern. That Adios Pro 1, I took that on dirt roads with lots of rocks uh, on them and, and still that outsole held up really, really well. So with that being said, let's talk about these two shoes in terms of which is the champion, which is the better shoe. This is a tough one. This is a really close one. They had both have very different approaches. I think that the Adios Pro 2, in terms of which does it do better at, marathon or half marathon, I think that Adios Pro 2 might do a little bit better at the half marathon, whereas the RC Elite 2 versus half marathon and marathon, it might perform a little bit better at the marathon distance than it does at the half marathon distance, just because of the way that that foam squishes. I feel like it's a little bit better suited for absorbing impact over the course of a longer run than it does uh, in terms of helping provide quick performance over a shorter distance of the half marathon. But if I'm gonna compare these two shoes head to head, which is the better shoe? I'm gonna give it to the Adios Pro 2 by just a little bit, but because I like feeling like the sense of the super shoe underfoot. I don't like it when it feels like a super shoe for like the first like four or five miles and then afterwards it just feels like a shoe. I kind of like to be reminded that I've got something special underfoot. Maybe that's just like me using it as a mental crutch, but I also like the knowledge that like, if I feel like I'm in a jam and I'm not feeling it and I need to like find another gear somehow, I know that if I just focus on good running mechanics, 
this shoe will reward me for my efforts and kind of help me get through some of those really like dark spots or those tough spots. So I feel like it's definitely like got that little bit extra that I'm looking for for a race day shoe. So I think that the New Balance RC Elite 2 is a fantastic marathon super shoe, but I think the Adios Pro 2 is just a little bit better. So those are my thoughts on these two super shoes head to head. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?